Welcome back everybody, this is Always back with another video on the channel. Today we're doing a comparison video between VirtualBox and Parallel Desktop. I was using VirtualBox because it's free, open source, uh, for a long time to run a different Linux distro and also Windows operating system on a Mac. But the problem I always had is with its performance. When you run a Linux distro in VirtualBox, it seems laggy. The performance is not up to the level where I could use that operating system and do some web development or any kind of software development. Now, after a long time trying this and getting sick of VirtualBox, I actually tried a parallel desktops. And just to mention, it's not a sponsored video at all. I'm just giving my honest review. Uh, what I feel about these two softwares. Now, overall, virtualization is great if you want to run a second operating system on your Mac or even you are running a Windows uh, as your primary operating system. You can run a Linux distro on, um, on the top of your uh, primary operating system. So let me give you a quick rundown about uh, VirtualBox. Basically, it's a free open source software. Now, if you want to get a proper software which will run uh, an operating system for you and it seems like it's running natively performance is up to the level where you could use that operating system for any kind of work that is parallel desktop now i'm going to start ubuntu first and let's see how long it takes to start so i'm going to click on play button and uh, actually let's take a look at the hardware so right now i'm allocating two cores four gig of ram uh, graphics is scaled 512 mag for the graphics and yeah that's pretty much it when we, we want to know right so i'll click on play and as you can see it's starting and guess what this is actually running from an external ssd drive i have an external ssd drive which is a samsung one and i'm running this full-fledged operating system from an ssd now let's wait uh before i could start using this and give you my uh you know a feeling how i feel about this operating system so i'm just gonna start this and let me open a few softwares for you guys and you can you know see how long it takes to open the software so now our operating system is up and running as you can see i have a, a, a virtual desktop as well so first software that we're going to try is going to be vs code which is an ide or uh, aka text editor for you know writing any kind of code so i'll click on this uh, visual studio code and there you go it opens up straight away it doesn't take that long let's close it let's open chrome browser and it should open straight away as well so the first time when you start operating system it probably take a few seconds but if i close this now and open it up it just it, it's the mouse and the cursor and everything it seems really really smooth here guys so let's try opening a few software. So open Mozilla, open Chrome, open settings, open uh, VS Code. Okay, let's find out if we can open other software as well. So let's click on all. And here, we I actually don't have a lot installed, but I was trying to do the web development uh, on this virtual uh, operating system, which, which I seem like it's actually running natively. I didn't face any kind of like, you know, lag or anything. And also you can see that the hardware that I'm allocating is pretty low, four gig of RAM, which I think should be, uh, should be there for every operating system that you run. So yes, this operating system seems really, really good. I can go to, you know, different uh, workspaces. So let's just go click here. I can click on a command and I can move this to next one create next one so here you can see i'm gonna go to different one so i can switch between and it seems so snappy so my uh you know uh the reason why i'm making this video is just to show you guys if you really want to have a virtual operating system running and you should you, you want it to seem like it's running natively then a virtual box is not going to work you're gonna have to have this uh a parallel desktop software so that is great uh, let's just go and restart this operating system and let's try to find out how long it takes to restart so let's just do a restart i'll be making a few videos uh, here and there to just show you guys how i set up the linux and also the overall experience that i face now this is basically a ubuntu operating system 
Now it's time for us to run multiple uh, Linux distros. So I'm going to click on Windows and I'm going to start Windows as well. So Windows takes, okay, it says start and switch, which slow down your computer because I have actually allocated a lot of RAM to this. Now this thing is, have uh, this thing restarted. So let's just shut it down actually. And then we will start Windows. Now Windows will run much more smoother because they actually build this software to run Windows on a Mac. I'm going to click on play and this time because I was allocating 8 gig of RAM to Windows. That's why it actually asked me, hey, there's not enough RAM available for your native operating system, which is 8 gig is, is required. So yeah, that's that's why it just gave me that uh, message. Other than that, it's it seemed really, really good. Now, Windows is running. Uh, it's taking a few seconds. I don't know why, but that's just an experience that I'm facing right now. It's it's in front of you guys. All right. So what's going on here is that it's, it was actually getting some... Um, uh let me just do a full screen guys so go to view i'm gonna go enter full screen all right let's uh do cool uh, so windows running now in a virtual box so now let's try some of the softwares that you you might want to use so let me open up this uh chrome oh wow looks like it's open really fast Mozilla, yep, opening really fast. Now I have installed some uh, heavy softwares in this. For example, this WebStorm is there. I have this IntelliJ. Also, I have a NetBeans. I have a Unity. I have an Android Studio. So right now, I've clicked on all of these softwares at once, and let's see if uh, this virtual operating system uh, running Windows can open all this software and how long it takes to open all these softwares. Right now, I see uh, it's struggling uh, because I've opened a lot of softwares. So we have a Unity open, guys. Unity is there. And NetBeans is uh, coming online as well. So, so far, I don't feel any lag. Uh, it seems all right. Let me just close this and uh, let's see how long it takes. Uh, for NetBeans because I'm starting a NetBeans for the first time. IntelliJ Idea, I'm starting for the first time. Android Studio is a pretty heavy software, guys. So it's starting for the, I think, third or fourth time. I didn't use it much. But yeah, so here, guys, we have uh, some workspaces as well. Let me click here. So we have some virtual desktops. Uh, NetBeans is the one taking time. Now, Overall, if I go to File Explorer, uh, the system that I'm running right now, I'll show the properties here. So I've got a six gig of RAM, not an eight gig, guys. Six gig of RAM, and also it's a, you know, basically a Mac, Mac uh, uh, operating system running this. So you have like Intel Core i7 8570H. It's a dual core because I've given it do two core so yeah uh it seems pretty snappy no issues whatsoever uh webstorm is up i'll open any i'll just create a new soft uh project so let's do maybe an angular cli or node and express uh anyway so as you can see the first time when i open all of these it's taking a bit of time for android studio and other softwares to come online because I open all of them at the same time. So I'm gonna try this again. Let's just close Android Studio. If uh, actually it says it's, it needs to update itself, so that's fine. Let's close this. So overall, no issues whatsoever. So if we go back to our native operating system, I'm gonna go to settings and I'm going to reduce the RAM here. So I'll give it a two gig RAM and then I will run this Linux as well. So now it should not cause any issues because we're not crossing eight gig of RAM. Now I have this Windows running here, guys. So let's just close this. And IntelliJ is there as well. The only thing is waiting is the NetBeans because I think it's installing something. So Linux, we have a Linux with two gig of RAM now, two cores is allocated to this. 
So let's see how it performs. So let's just start this. Windows is running good. And uh, this code open fairly fast, but not that fast. So yeah, if I open this second time, now it should be fast. As you can see, yes, it is opening fast. Now we have a running a full fledged two or three operating system actually. So we have a Windows running, we have a Ubuntu running. I can even start Mint and let's see if this causes an issue. So starting this virtual machine will slow down your Mac. Would you like to start anyway? Well, let's just start anyway. So let's see if we can run three operating systems on the same time. So we have a Ubuntu here. So let me open this setting so we know it's Ubuntu. We have a Windows operating system. Okay, uh, let's open uh, WebStorm second time. Let's see if it opens up. And where is Linux Mint? Okay, so our NetBeans have started as well. Great, let's close the NetBeans. Here we have Ubuntu and there you go, we have a Linux Mint running as well. So, yeah. Now, other than this, this software has a lot more uh, options. For example, this is like a parallel toolbox where you get it, you get like uh, a plugins or different kind of software that you can use. So we can have a record screen uh, options. We have a, you know, clean drive which is a, like a, a utility that will help you to clean the hard drive. And I found this, this is great. Also, we have uh, another tool where we have uninstall apps. Now it's quite hard sometimes to find the files, which files are taking up a lot of space. But here, this utility, I would say, it's great. It just finds a lot of files, wherever these uh, the files are stored in your operating system. It will basically find them and uninstall them for you. So we have a lot of utilities here, guys. Uh, hide files or hide desktops or you know download videos or airplane mode, uh, convert video as well. Do not disturb. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good utilities that you get with this. It's free, of course. When you buy a parallel desktop, you get it. Now here I'm running three operating system at the same time, and if I go to Windows one and I will uh, actually. There's another mode that I want to show you, which I would say view, and that would be, I think, exist the full screen. And then if I go and click on, uh, there's a coherence mode. So if we go to action, I, I've just seen that before. Let me just find out. There you go. So this enter coherence. So I enter coherence and I click on yes. And then you know what happens now? So Windows switching to coherence. So now it's basically all the Windows operating systems are running in uh, coherence mode. So basically I'm not seeing any Windows, but I can uh, run any kind of application in coherence mode. So here if I click here and I'll just use JetBrains IntelliJ. So it will tell me, hey, they, this is a JetBrains running from Windows 10. I can start this. So if I say uh, video scribe, uh, there you go. So here we have this uh, software and I can start this in a Mac operating system, which is going to be, you know, seems like it's running on a Mac, but it, it's not running on a Mac. It's coming from Windows. So you can see how great is this uh, mode. So I'm going to quit. So you see this? This is actually a Windows software, guys, but running on. Mac. So there's a lot more option in this parallel. Uh, if you really want to run a virtual operating system, then I think this is a great option. And uh, yeah, and it's not a sponsor video whatsoever, guys. And I'll be making a lot more videos uh, for parallel desktops. Okay, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.